We are back from our road trip. Mm -hmm. And we are going to share with you some of our thoughts, including how the Tesla fared in its race against the Bolt, even though that rally was a year apart. Stay tuned. Road trip wrap up, time for all the stats. We are back and what I've compiled the statistics from our recent road trip and our Tesla Model 3 uh, to Charlottesville, Virginia, and compared to our road trip from a year ago, in our uh, Chevy 2022 Bolt. Chevy Bolt. Now let me give you some, well first off I'm gonna say the most obvious uh, thing that people are already gonna know so it's, you're not gonna be teased till the end, but stay to the end for the statistics. Uh, the Tesla won in terms of time spent charging. I, I'm sure that surprises absolutely no one. No one. <laughs> um, but uh, I wanna just kind of give you some background. We had, uh, we've, we've owned our Chevy Bolt for over two years now. Uh, two and a half probably, yeah. and within a month of us getting it, we took the Bolt on a road trip to Sevierville, Tennessee and back. Uh, we did the same route there and back across Arkansas and Tennessee. And last year when we did that road trip, we wanted to do something a little different. So we went through the southern route of Louisiana, uh, Mississippi, Alabama, a clip of Georgia before we went into Tennessee. And then we came back the route we were used to. This year, the destination moved further away to Charlottesville, Virginia, and we uh, bought this Tesla Model 3 from Hertz. It was very inexpensive at the time, and um, it with the Bolt are kind of really good budget bargain EVs right now. Um, anyway, most of the route, three quarters of the route, was the same because we ended up going through Sevierville, Tennessee and charging at a Bucky's outside of Sevierville, Tennessee with the Tesla that was probably equidistant to where our destination was mm -hmm. um, last year from Knoxville. So mm -hmm. I'm using that uh, supercharger in Sevierville, Tennessee as our comparison metric to our destination last year with the Bolt. Right. Um, the Chevy Bolt is only capable of charging at 54 kilowatt hours max, although I have seen an EA station say it was delivering 55. It only does that up to about 50% state of charge or beyond, and then it really ramps down. Um, the Tesla Model 3 that we have is a base rear wheel drive with the LFP battery. It's also a 2022 model, and its maximum charge speed is supposed to be 170, but most of the time when we plug in and we get that max speed, we're getting 171. Uh, kilowatts if we're on a version 3 Tesla supercharger. So that's just a little bit of, of background on it. Uh, that distance is a little over 900 miles one way. We'll say it's roughly about 1,800, 1,900 miles over the course of the trip. So uh, let's get into what the statistics were and then we'll talk to you about our experience. So both vehicles were able to pull off that round trip with the same number of charging stops. Yes. They both did 15 charging stops, although on my spreadsheet it doesn't quite uh, look like that because I'm only counting our stop in, the, in Brinkley, Arkansas with the Tesla as one charging stop, even though we plugged in twice while we were there. And, oh, right. Right, because we, we plugged in, we got dinner, and when we got dinner, we found out that the hotel we were staying at was going to charge us for electricity to charge the car, and it was going to charge us more than the supercharger would. Yeah. So we got our food and plugged back in while we were eating. Yeah, and we didn't need to. There wasn't a, a, a fault with the supercharger. It was just circumstances that led to that. That makes sense to count it as one, I and, think. And on the Chevy Bolt, there's uh, two plug-ins in Richland, Mississippi, but that was because one of those machines didn't work and was a mile and a half away from the one that did. Uh, so that's, that's there. But 15 charge stops. Over the course of those 15 charge stops, the Bolt won in terms of overall cost. The, those, all of those charge stops put together in the Chevy Bolt, uh, based off of all of the invoices that I got back, mm -hmm. came to $133.75. And the Tesla came to $158.03. That there were mitigating circumstances. There were mitigating circumstances. Do you remember what any of those were? Well, I remember that we did have some free charges uh, because the charge speed was reduced due to issues with the chargers. Now, when we took that trip the first time, we had a lot of them. Mm -hmm. This time around, it was only one. Right. Part of that is because the 
chargers that we use on the Bolt are completely different from the chargers that we use on the Tesla, and the Tesla charging system is more reliable and therefore less likely to need to give you a discount. Far more reliable. <laughs> uh, the first year that we did it, most of the chargers, uh, well, they were all Electrify America, and most of them were free because the chargers were derated. When the Electrify America chargers are not capable of uh, giving their 150 or 350 kilowatts and they're throttled down to 50, they don't charge for it. Mm -hmm. And on a bolt, we can only matter. get 54, so hey, cool, yeah. no big deal. That was just a bonus for us when we were driving the bolt. Based on how long we were there though, I've, I calculated how long that charge would have cost us. It was in Jackson, Tennessee, and we were at that charger for, I'm looking at the wrong one. Uh, yeah, I did the math wrong. Oh, no. I'll, 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 have to, I'll have to redo the math, so quick edit. So math is done. We were at that Electrify America in Jackson, Tennessee for one hour and six minutes, 66 minutes. Since it was a free charge from Electrify America, I didn't get an invoice on it. So I'm recalculating what it could have been. Uh, it charged 15 cents per minute in Tennessee at that time in September of 2023. So 15 cents times 66 minutes comes to $9.90. Uh, also, we had that EV Go in Knoxville, Tennessee at the Flying J truck stop. Right, which we got credit for because we had bought, we got credit when we bought the Bolt. Yeah, but you right. remember that one, it was a nice. It was a nice place, yeah. It had a, it had a cover over the EV chargers like they were gas stations, like, it was so cool. Like we're real people. We loved it. But we didn't pay for that one because we used our EV Go credits that we got for buying a Chevy. Yeah. Um, and that was $12.21. If I add $9.90, and granted there would be tax on that too, I'm not calculating that in, plus $12.21, then the total at uh, for the Bolt would have been $155.86. Now, if you're road tripping in a CCS car, the chances of coming across a derated Electrify America that gives you a free charge, it's pretty high. high. We, yes. I don't think we've ever road tripped the Bolt where we haven't encountered that. Correct. Uh, and if you have EVgo credits with a Bolt, chances are you're gonna stop at an EVgo. So really taking that $155 figure mm -hmm. uh, into account, isn't realistic, I don't think. You're probably are going to pay less with a Bolt because of those considerations. However, it's good to know that the price would be higher if you didn't have those considerations because you're going to see later that the Tesla actually has a higher efficiency. Yeah, and it's really not that much. I mean, because the, the Tesla was, actually the Tesla was higher. The Tesla was $158.03. So if we look at it, we spent between... $2.50 to 21, uh, what was, what was the, the difference? Uh, $24.28 at, at most, we spent more to charge the Tesla. But you mentioned efficiency. So here is total number of kilowatt hours that we used on the trip. The Bolt used 463.2096 kilowatt hours. The Tesla used 432.862. That means over the same distance and the same amount of miles, the Tesla used 30.3476 kilowatt hours less electricity over the course of that route. Now that may not seem like much, but that's half the battery pack in that car. Yeah, that's a that's a big deal. That effic efficiency is everything, you guys. We really like having a car that has the highest efficiency possible. For yeah, I mean the highest efficiency that we can afford, at least. Right, that uh, we can afford. Uh, I, mean, uh, right. I think a Lucid, uh, I think a Lucid Air ha is a more efficient uh, EV, but we can't afford a Lucid Air. Besides, uh, most, <laughs> of the car, most of the luxury cars are very low efficiency. So yeah, but but. Efficiency is a bit, that's half the battery pack. Yeah, um, I mean, granted, it's half of one charge of the battery pack, but still, yeah. it's, it's, it's substantial. So time-wise, this is the big one for the trip. The Tesla spent three hours and 51 minutes at superchargers over the course of that 1,900 miles at 15 different uh, charging stops. And some of those stops, 
10 minutes at that stop wasn't because of the car. It was because we still needed to walk back from the restroom at the back of the mall, mm -hmm. or we had to wait for the food that we'd ordered at the drive-through. Mm -hmm. I've gotten comments on the, at least on part two of the road trip that we should have always been eating while we charge. Don't wait for the hotel breakfast, get a mm -hmm. plastic container, put it in that and eat it at your next charging stop. And mm -hmm. this car didn't, charges too fast for that. Yeah. Uh, if we, uh, one time, that one charge stop that we had in Hope, Arkansas, we got lunch, we plugged in and, and it was at a Wendy's uh, in a gas station that wasn't that far away. We walked in, we ordered, came out, the car was ready to go. Yeah, that happens um, to us all the time with all the, the Tesla. Time with we the just Tesla. had to change how we arranged things because the, te the car is just faster than we are. Whereas with the Bolt, absolutely correct. Eat yeah. while you're charging and don't get it to go, go in, order, sit down, go in into a restaurant that serves you with a knife and a fork because you still may have to wait a couple of minutes when you get out to the car yeah. when you're done with the bolt. That's what but, happened at that 66 minute charging yeah. that we had with the bolt. But we the, just we went still in had to ate. wait a couple of minutes. Yeah, but, we did. But, uh, so, but three hours and 51 minutes, the bolt spent 10 hours and 32 minutes uh, to charge going over, uh, going over that same route. That is a difference of six hours and 41 minutes. That's a lot of time to be sitting at a charger. We spent at most $25 more in electricity to save almost seven hours. Yeah, that was definitely worth it. Now, to be fair, 46 minutes of that, uh, of that difference came from the charger in Ridgeland, Mississippi, outside of Jackson, that would not initialize when we were on our Bolt road That's trip. Right. I look back at the timestamp that I got from ChargePoint from the very first time I plugged into it, mm -hmm. and then I looked at the, at the timestamp from the charger that worked, that was a mile away, and subtracted that time, and that was a 46 minute difference. Mm -hmm. 46 minutes, uh, on the phone with ChargePoint, trying to get that thing to work, multiple times of plugging in, getting in the car and driving to the other one, cost us 46 minutes. So really, roughly say the car, the Tesla Model 3, was six hours faster charging on that route, but the charging infrastructure mm -hmm. was 46 minutes faster, uh, just because we didn't have to worry about the chargers not Hugely working right. significant, you guys. The Tesla charging network is just very reliable, and that means that you can trust your projections of how long it's going to take you to get someplace. So let's talk about uh, about some of the differences. Mm -hmm. You plugged in, uh, you've plugged in the Bolt before at a CCS charger, and yeah. you and you plugged in a few times on this road trip. The differences between uh, the networks. What's your opinions? It's it's just night and day. I mean, the the CCS chargers. First of all, there are lots of different companies that supply it, so you have to have a bunch of different apps. You have to you know, make sure that you've got the right adapter, that you're at the right place. I took my Fiat to a, a charger once when I was a little bit out of town, and it I got there and realized that it was the wrong kind of charger. It would my it wouldn't charge my car. So the, with the Tesla, that just doesn't happen. You go to a supercharger and it just works. You don't spend a lot of time. You don't spend. You don't have to worry about opening the app. You don't have to enter your credit card information. You drive up to the to the place. You, there are always um, stations available because there are so many of them. You just grab it, touch your charge port, it opens, you plug it in, it charges, you disconnect it, you put it back. That's it. It's just so much easier. That time also doesn't count uh, how long we had to wait at the Electrify America in Nashville with the Bolt because I didn't have that figure in. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was at least a 15 minute wait to get an available charger right. because the EA in Nashville that we stopped at a year ago uh -huh. was completely full. There was a mm -hmm. car ahead of us in line. There were two units that were broken. That's right. um, this year, we drove to that same parking lot mm -hmm. for the per just to see what that charger we looked like. looking and at it. It was packed again. Yeah. And on the other side of that shopping center, there were two dozen superchargers that had like five Teslas sitting at them. Yeah, yeah. It's it's just, there's no comparison at all. The the Tesla supercharger network is just far, far, far superior to the uh, anything else. Well, in terms of reliability, we, did, we didn't we did come across a broken one. And if we had, there we still had plenty of others to choose from. Uh, that's the next thing about it. More units at mm -hmm. each one. A small Tesla supercharger has eight plugs. Mm -hmm. a 
big Electrify America has eight plugs. Right. Some EV goes have, the EV go at that Flying J truck stop mm -hmm. could max out at I think four or eight cars total. Yeah. And that's a huge EV go yeah, installation. That was giant for EV but, but eight Tesla superchargers is a small installation. Yeah. There were a lot of places that we had a dozen or two dozen and you go to a Bucky's and there's 38 uh, plugs there. It's yeah, um, just not going to run out. So the, we never had to worry about waiting in line and we were charging uh, you know, we were dealing with hurricane traffic too. That's true. Um, yeah. yeah, we definitely dispelled the myth that you can't charge in the rain because we charged in the rain most of the time. Yeah, almost um, the whole trip was rain. But but you go in with the bolt. We had to know which network we were on. If it was a new net charging network, we had to figure out what we needed to do to get the charge to go on, either interacting with the machine or downloading an app and setting mm -hmm. up an account. Mm -hmm. And if we even if we had the app, we had to open the app. Electrify America would make me have to swipe on my phone to get the charge started. Mm -hmm. EVgo was plug and charge. Plug, uh, if you have plug and charge, it doesn't matter to you. Mm -hmm. But with and then it's the big huge CCS plug mm -hmm. that. Just takes a, a good amount of oomph to plug in. Yeah, they're kind of heavy and bulky. Heavy, and a little bit unwieldy. Heavy, yeah. bulky, unwieldy. Uh, whereas the Tesla Supercharger is a little itty bitty plug. You just grab and go, boop, and yeah, you're done. It's it's light um, and it's easy. Yeah. It's light. It's easy, and I think that's probably a bigger reason why everybody's switching over to that plug. Yeah. Uh, and opening up, and a lot of manufacturers are going to be opening up the supercharger network. My experience now, I haven't gotten our adapter for the bolt yet, but uh, my experience with the bolt at uh, using a magic dock, it's better than at an Electrify America, but I still have to interact in the app to do it because at least at the time on the one that I used, plug and charge wasn't an option for our bolt, but it's automatic with the Tesla, so that that's great. So the charging infrastructure was better. Wait times were non-existent mm -hmm. um, and just, and we didn't have to worry about where there was one. There were plenty of them along our route. Yeah, yeah, there was not an issue. And the, the, the infrastructure is not only higher quality, but it is more plentiful. So you can go more places in a Tesla because there are more superchargers available along all the routes that you want to take. So that having that car on this trip allowed us to cover the miles that we needed to cover in a reasonable amount of time. We did not have any, um, did not have any issues. It served the purpose. It felt a little bit more hectic, especially on that first day. I think we got more into a rhythm yeah. uh, in the later days of the trip. And mm -hmm. um, we figured out a strategy. We, which we, we figured out about a strategy. In the other we, you know, the whole strategy of, you know, sometimes we're going to be plugged in and charged too long uh, if we have to go all the way into the restroom that's far away. But if there's a rest area five miles ahead, we'll actually save time. Mm -hmm. uh, going there. Uh, and, there, and there's going to be folks who disagree with that uh, strategy, but it also worked for us. It, it, it worked for us. It was, more it, comfortable. it was fine. Yeah. It allowed us a chance to, you know, get out and, and do whatever we needed to do. But we did not have to wait on this car. That car was ready to go before we were every time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so it was, it was great. So Give us some uh, comments about your EV road trip experience. Uh, that'd be great. Or if you have any questions that you would like us to address yeah. about the difference between road tripping a Bolt and road tripping a Model 3, send them to us. If I get enough of those, we might just turn that into a video. Who knows? Sure. But um, thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe for more content. We're going to be testing out uh, the actually Smart Summon while we still Ooh, have it. Um, smart Summon. So we'll have that video coming out. Thanks for watching.